Uh, skull-based tumor refers to uh, tumor or growth that board that sites itself and borders itself between uh, the brain and the rest of the uh, head, which means facial structures and nerves, and that usually occurs uh, fairly uh, centrally uh, and positions itself. For example, if he has in the front uh, tumor that uh, straddles being in the nose and being in the brain itself, or if it's posteriorly, then it borders itself between the ear structures and the uh, brain structures. Unfortunately, uh, as of now, uh, there's no known cause. Um, but definitely, there are some associated uh, uh, relations. For example, people who've had radiation for whatever reason for the uh, face and the head region uh, five, ten years ago may actually have an increased risk. Uh, the consideration from that end, of course, is that uh, thankfully these tumors are all uh, benign. Very well, a few of them are, are cancerous lesions as we know them, i.e., spreading to the rest of the body. The consideration for this is that these individuals may present with headaches, may present with um, uh, double vision, hearing loss, swallowing problems, the whole gamut of them. Uh, they can present acutely, means very quickly, very short uh, uh, history of symptoms for over a week, over days or over months. Uh, so the, his, the, the, the differentiations are quite uh, difficult to sort of pinpoint. It really depends on a multitude of factors. Of course, the standard basic uh, uh, scans that patients usually come to us with uh, is an MRI scan because that makes the diagnosis and then they're looking for treatment. Uh, we look at our scans slightly differently uh, from, for example, the referring doctor. The reason being that when we look at a scan, we are trying to ascertain a few things. Is this cancerous or is this not cancerous? How are we going to access these tumors if we're going to operate on them? And if you're going to treat them, right, what are the critical areas that we need to preserve? Because obviously, uh, if the tumor is in an accessible, inaccessible position and if you're going to open up the thing, it's going to be a massive operation. How are we going to tailor the treatment so that it's as atraumatic for the patients as possible? So that's our overriding concern. When you're dealing with a skull-based tumour that can be potentially complex, you know, involving, for example, the eye or the nose or even the, uh, for very large tumours, the throat as well as the ear, it's important that we are able to uh, get cooperation from the other specialties. Multidisciplinary uh, uh, cooperation is critical in this area. The operations are large and we do need a sort of a division of labour so that basically they will bring the best expert, the human expertise together. Sometimes we also bring in our radio surgery colleagues whereby, for example, not every skull-based tumour is amenable to surgery or in, in, and can be treated better with, for example, radiation. In which case, that input is very critical. And of course, we've got neurosurgeons who are trained specifically in this area who are able to give their inputs. And that's where we've got a, a, a weekly meeting to discuss all these cases and so that we know that what we consider is the best treatment is a committee decision based uh, on expert opinion uh, within our institution. So one of the things is that we take all our images and see whether we need any further images. Um, and that images of those, those images that we have are also being put through a processing uh, mechanism which is uh, what we call the Dextroscope, which is a virtual reality platform. Um, now that is unique for Singapore in the sense that uh, this is a system that has been developed in-house 10 years ago, has already been commercialised and we are the testing unit and of course that's something that we utilise a lot. In our, in our experience, we think that it helps us plan the operations, plan, plan and management better because we can now aim to uh, access or try and remove these tumours or try and treat these tumours by the least invasive method. And the only way to do so is to be able to glean all the information in a 3D perspective. So by using the dextroscope, and I shall uh, demonstrate that later, a tumour 
such as uh, very large tumors such as this, for example, and you see uh, can be accessed you know, through the smallest possible incision. Uh, and that becomes very important for the patient. We are moving towards minimally invasive approaches which are supported by technology. In that sense, we are talking about using pre-surgical planning with 3D, going to miss a careful and full interrogation of all imaging uh, uh, that is available. Beyond that, right, that information can then be seamlessly put into what we call an operating suite which is designed specifically for that. And that's where the brain suite comes in, whereby there is what we call global positioning systems, we've got intraoperative monitoring of critical structures and nerves, we've got intraoperative imaging capabilities. So now we can do an MRI within the operating room, we don't have to take the patient out of the operating room to do the scan. That gives you a lot of real-time information within the operating theatre to react to real-time changes. So that will necessarily lead to lower mobility with lower complications and lower hospital stay, a shorter hospital stay, uh, as well as being able to achieve the objective of uh, a surgical objective that's redelineated a lot more uh, often than, 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 than previously. And of course, there's a Novalis system which we are now we've now been using for uh, slightly more than six months now, uh, which is represents a quantum uh, leap in terms of comfort for patients. Previous radio surgery systems that we use require us to put a frame on the head. Uh, treatment times are uh, three to four hours. Now we don't have to put a frame on the head. Treatment time is half an hour, uh, and we can treat um, uh, larger lesions even you know, when we know that the tumour is very large and you could kill you, then obviously we, reduce, uh, we can reduce the size of the tumour from surgery. But by removing the tumour completely, you will end up with a lot of collateral damage, like damage to blood vessels and damage to critical nerves that can not only cause functional problems, but cosmetic problems. In which case then we can leave a small amount of tumour for radio surgery. So we can combine the best of both worlds. So in the, in the, in the very complex situation, uh, we've managed to do the combination approaches with very uh, good results.